Uh, I'm here with Josephine Martin. Uh, Josephine uh, has a, had a long and storied career in uh, school nutrition, um, was a silver plate winner back in 1972. She was the first executive director of the National Food Service Management Institute when that was established by Congress. Um, there's an entire range of accomplishments and achievements that uh, Josephine has had to her record over the years. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm here with her today is that Dr. Martin uh, is receiving the American Dietetic Association's highest honor in a few weeks. It's the Marjorie Holzheiser Kofer Award, highest honor that ADA presents. And um, we thought we'd have a chance here to interview her for a few minutes about uh, her career and uh, some of the changes she's seen in uh, child nutrition over the years and a little bit about what her crystal ball shows for the future. Um, looking back over your career in child nutrition, what would you say uh, were the biggest milestones that you've seen in terms of the impact those programs have had in the last 50 years, I guess? I think the largest impact that the child nutrition programs have made is that there is a recognition that what children eat makes a difference in their lives for a lifetime. It's not just while they're in school or the day they're in school, but it's a lifetime proposition. I think the recognition that education, and particularly the child nutrition program, is a partnership. It's a partnership in a number of ways. Number one, it's a partnership between the federal government, the state government, uh, and local governments. No one government, no one set of uh, policy makers can assure the entire uh, implementation of education or of, of health and well-being for children. So I think that's a partnership that's very important. And it was important in the development of the National School Lunch Act that Congress enacted in the 40s. Then the second partnership is if we're going to improve the, the health and well-being of children and their nutritional and their food habits, then it, we have to recognize that it is a partnership between the home and the school and the food service industry because it's what children eat at home, it's what children eat at school, and it's what children eat away from home. So it is a shared responsibility if we are to achieve the objective and the mission of the child nutrition programs. Uh, when did you first get into school nutrition? It was a few years later, I guess, right? Well, not too much later. Uh, my hospital administrator decided to change jobs, and there was going to be some changes in the hospital. And I had an opportunity to join the Georgia Department of Education after about 18 months as, hosp uh, as hospital dietitian. And I joined the Georgia Department of Education as an area consultant working in North Georgia. My responsibility was to provide oversight and direction, administration, and leadership in 34 counties in northwest Georgia that involved 434 schools. I think I was about 22 when I joined the State Department of Education. That was a lot of responsibility. It was a lot of responsibility, but there again, I was very fortunate to have to come to work in the State Department of Education that recognized that uh, the child nutrition program was very important to the health and education, that it was an integral part of the educational program. Um, that was right after the School Lunch Act really started to get implemented at the state level, right, right at the very beginning, right? The National School Lunch Act was passed in 1946, but the, the State Departments of Education first started receiving federal money for the program at the end of World War II, and in 1943, the offices in the state agencies, the school lunch offices in the state agencies were established. But they went from 1943 to 1946 just on a year-to-year -year appropriation. And then in 1946, Richard B. Russell was a, a chairman of the Agriculture Committee in the United States Senate, and he recognized the importance of nutrition. And he and two other representatives, Senator Alan Ellender from Louisiana, who was a Democrat, and Senator George Aiken from Vermont, who was a Republican, authored a piece of legislation to establish the National School Lunch Act. And at that moment, the bipartisan relationship and bipartisan support for feeding children was established. 
and it was long felt that child nutrition programs should never become a partisan issue, that children are hungry regardless of whatever the partisan politics is, sure. and we should, stay, we should stay focused on the needs of children and not be concerned about the partisanship. At that level, I worked for, uh, I was there for nine, nine years, and my primary responsibility, an exciting responsibility there, was not only in that area that I worked providing supervision in those 434 counties, but I was also responsible for helping the uh, state design, not design, but approve plans that architects and engineered, engineers sent to the state to build about 1,300 new schools, and all of those schools were required to have a school food service program in it. So we reviewed all of those, and I worked uh, extensively in uh, the facilities design and implementation.